Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Based on the hit fantasy series, The Rune Lords, comes The Rune Lords, the board game. And this is a tactics style game. It plays one to four players. It takes about 45 minutes to about 180, and it's for ages 10 and up by Red Gin Games. In this game, you're going to be selecting the different modes, whether you're playing cooperatively, solo, or against each other with the variants of Blitz or a more tactical style game. You can choose between many different styles. You can build your own deck or start with a starter deck, but really what gets into it is you're starting to place and deploy units down on the different boards available. You'll be selecting different characters to choose from, whether it be tokens or whether it be your recruits or even your rune lord, him or herself. And you'll be attempting to do certain things in the game, whether it be to defeat your opponent's rune lord or the adventure mode where you're fighting against the many various bad guys around the table. Or of course, you could go ahead and head head to head with an opponent or multiple opponents and try and reduce their point totals and increase your own by defeating their rune lords and their other various different candidates on the board there. This has a large variety of different things in the game, but we're going to specifically talk about Blitz mode, which will give you a good idea of how the rest of the modes play. And during my review, I'll talk about all the different ones and how they kind of influence the game and what you may or may not want to play based on um, your play style for tactics style games. But if you like tactics games, check out down below. Here we go. We'll talk about it right now. Here we have the game, The Rune Lords, and it's set up for two players right now, which is the demo version. It's what I have currently, and we're going to be showing you the basic idea of the Blitz game, but we will talk about the rest of the versions up above. Now, in this game, every player is going to get a board, and the board here is going to represent their keep, and of course, their active Rune Lord, and their recruits, and their tokens here, active markers. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you're going to be able to choose to deck build or not. If you'd like to deck build, there is a separate section that will allow you to do deck building. In my opinion, deck building in this game is the best tactics deck building game I've ever seen. I don't know how good that goes for you, but it really is a lot of fun. And there's certain events that are going to take place during that building. But if not, you don't need to use those. You can just simply start with the base set of cards. You'll be ba basically placing your Rune Lord in the space one, and then two random uh, recruits into spaces two and three. You'll find the bases and or if you're using whatever the game might come with uh, and place them next to the boards there so they're ready. You're going to also be getting these little tokens, these active markers. You'll have two traps. You're going to have these specific active markers or these uh, tokens that are going to be potentially come out. They're both mercenaries and attack dogs. And uh, they're going to come out throughout the game as well, but set them there. Make sure you set all of your markers um, on the space here. Uh, so that you'll be moving these little guys across and hopefully giving your rune lord some benefit. This specific keep here is dedicated to the rune lord, and if he passes or she passes, you're in trouble. You got your four activation markers. Your rune lord can have two, everybody else gets one, and your tokens have one already available. You'll shuffle your deck after that, and you'll deal out five cards to yourself, and make sure that you separate the active token markers, the mercenary and force hound cards, so that you can see their stats whenever you need to throughout the game. If you're just playing the blue you're not going to need this battle track here, so you can go ahead and set that aside as well. And if you're not playing the adventure mode slash uh, the villain mode, single player mode, you can set this aside as well. And the game gets pretty condensed uh, for each of the modes you do. You won't need any of these extra markers here, uh, except for when you uh, activate a new recruit. You'll take these and place them in the bases of your previously dead recruits. Uh, and I'll go ahead and set aside the villain tactics cards as well. So you'll just have traps here for this one. You'll have the die that will be doing your damage. Extra die here set aside. And then you're going to have your different tokens in the game. They, are, they vary from bleeding to being on fire to slowing. Uh, you're going to get durability, etc., etc. Just place them here along with the health markers uh, that are going to range from 1, 3, and 5. Basically, damage you're going to be doing to your characters or doing uh, to your opponent's characters. And then you're ready to deploy. And deploying is pretty easy. In turn order, you're going to randomly, these guys are going to be face down, you're going to randomly select one, flip it over, and reveal it and place it on the board anywhere you'd like. Remember, facing matters in this game. After you do that, your opponent will get a chance to place one of their characters anywhere on the board, uh, as long as that character is at least two, two, more than two spaces away from their enemies. And then it just goes back and forth like that until all players have placed something down on the board in some fashion. And then, of course, after that, you're going to be doing a deployment method. So you'll be taking these guys out. These are spaces in which you're going to deploy units um, whenever your units pass on. Okay, there we go. So I'll go ahead and place this guy. It has to be at least, uh, it has to be four spaces or more away from your opponents. Or, uh, yeah, more than, more than three spaces away from your opponents. And then uh, the green will go ahead and do the same as well. Maybe they want to be 
really protective and place that over there. And then you're basically ready to go. You've got your five cards in hand, you've got your active markers, you've got your tokens you're going to be utilizing for each time. So let's talk about how a round is played. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, discard at the beginning of any, every round, discard any number of cards in your hand. You won't do this for the first round of the game because you're just starting out, but you're always going to go to your max hand size, which can be based off of this Dedicates Keep here. It'll tell you if you can get max additional hand size. Of course, that goes away if you lose your Warlord. Uh, uh, then, of course, you're going to basically choose one of your units. So if Green was going to go first here, he or she would go ahead and activate one of their units. So she, she or she might choose to activate that character there, in which case, this specific character is going to get different activations. Anything that was flipped over from a previous round is going to get flipped up and you'll be able to utilize them. Uh, as you can see on the card here, it's going to have the character's full health. It will have the type of character it is and the name. It'll have how far the character moves if you use that green symbol, which is this one here. It'll have uh, how much damage you do with what die, it's a green die there, and how far away it has to be, or area of effect, which in this case is one. When you activate with this yellow, so I can flip this over, I can then flip, flip a, uh, roll a green die as long as one person is one space away from me, and then I would gain any benefits from the die from my the symbols that are rolled on it, as well as any damage. And then down here is utilizing this little guy here, that uh, lets me do some specific action. Now, of course, you're going to have cards in your hand as well. When you activate a character, you can use those actions to use cards in your hand, whether it be something like Lucky here, where you can do certain things like countering. Um, you could play something like a Warhorn. And even if you don't want to do those or these on here, each of these has a basic uh, active that you can utilize them for. So one of them might be to draw a card or move a unit in some way. So there's always something you can do on your turn, even if you don't want to use this guy. Another thing to note too is if you activate a space that maybe a character has fallen, you have two options. You can either activate all of your tokens that are on the board, or you can draw a card from the deck and place out a new guy there, uh, thus allowing you to have more characters come onto the field. Because in the Blitz mode, you're only trying to defeat the Warlord, that's all that matters. But in the other game mode, you actually will be able to defeat multiple units and that's how you're going to win the game. So basically this character has been activated, I'm now I'm going to go ahead and select to have her move, so I'll flip over this green token here. She then can move up to her max movement, so she'll move obviously uh, two spaces. Now where you move and how you move makes a big difference. If you're moving in front of somebody, you can't move away from them, they'll see you, they'll make an opportunity attack. If you attack from behind, you'll gain certain benefits. So then she'll go ahead and choose to attack. She'll flip over the yellow, like I explained before, she'll roll it, she does one damage, she has a circle, nothing with a circle, so she just does one damage to the unit that she is attacking. After that, she might wanna go ahead and use this, which allows her to move any ally uh, two spaces. And then she could end. She'd flip over this to complete. And the next player will get to go. And that player will then activate one of his or her units and then complete it and pass. And that's basically how the game goes. It goes back and forth like that. Uh, once everybody has used all of their active markers, then you'll see something like, like this. Complete, complete, double complete, and complete. Uh, the round will end. Everybody has done that. They'll, everybody will flip these all over and replenish any tokens, draw back up to five cards, your maximum hand size, and rinse and repeat until the objective is completed, whether that be might be to defeat a villain or to defeat your opponent's characters or just simply defeat your opponent's rune lord. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. If you get any of these status effects, which are gonna trigger based on a lot of special abilities or cards, you're going to put them, of course, in the war zone. When your opponents take damage, or you take damage, you'll place these in your war zone as well. If you get a fire after you already have a fire or a burn, you'll be simply just taking a damage. Some of them can stack like these guys here, but for the most part, all of them are going to basically just take a, you'll take a damage uh, when you after you already have one of them. And they all do different effects, whether it be to slow you or to burn you with every round. Uh, there's also traps in the game you'll be able to place on the board, and you'll place them down based on the value of the trap. And then whenever somebody comes across them, there'll be certain rules as to how you will have to walk across them or move next to them. Uh, you'll flip over one of these trap cards and do what it says. You'll apply a certain effect, you'll roll a certain die based on whether it's a white or a red trap. Now, there's a couple other little things, well, quite a lot of other little things in the game as to what cards come in your deck and special abilities, as well as how movement works. And of course, even on this board here, you'll notice that there's certain spaces you simply cannot move over unless you have something called flight. Um, 
as well as walls. There's a certain attacks of opportunity when it comes to certain movements, but for the most part, I think you pretty much have an idea of how the game works. Moving around the board here, simply rolling your die, attacking, utilizing cards in your hand, and activating all of these characters. Uh, let's go ahead and come up and talk about my review now. We'll discuss everything in the game that I can discuss with you, and whether or not you should pick up this game currently on Kickstarter, The Rune Lords. So if you've played a tactics game before, then you will understand how Rune Lords is played. There's a lot of mechanics that share similarities with certain tactics games that you would find in Rune Lords, such as activating a unit, moving it around based on actions, and performing those actions by rolling dice. However, this game brings some uniqueness to it, because when you activate a unit, you're going to get action tokens or active markers. You'll be flipping those over and utilizing them, whether they come from cards from their hand, or whether it comes from somebody's uh, active character on the board. And sometimes those active units can trigger other units to move and attack. Uh, there's certain spaces on the board, obviously, that will affect how you attack. There's certain uh, different positions on the board that will affect whether you do additional damage, ignoring certain tokens or bonuses a player might have from attacking from behind, etc., etc. And after you utilize those markers, whether it be for that specific character or from your hand, then you will have a pass and your opponent will get to take their turn. Uh, another unique thing about this game, too, is you're going to activate the Rune Lord twice. The Rune Lord is your most important character in the game. It actually is going to have its own keep, and that keep will actually keep track of a lot of varying benefits from the Rune Lord and for yourself, whether it be your maximum hand size, the amount of damage he does, the amount of uh, extra health he has, his movement, and so on and so forth. And utilizing those cards to facilitate that character is going to benefit you greatly because it's going to keep him uh, very, very powerful and thusly keep you powerful. If you lose your Rune Lord, it's likely you're going to lose the game regardless of the game mode. You don't want to lose your Rune Lord if you can help it. However, that's not always true. In the Blitz version of the game, it's quicker. It plays about 45 minutes to about an hour and a half, depending on how fast you play and how many players. Uh, and that one is specifically targeting the Rune Lords. If you can defeat your opponent's Rune Lords, they're removed from the game and you'll win when you're the last Rune Lord standing. However, if you're playing with a more complex variant of the game, which is a points mode, you can basically attack any character and thusly reduce or increase your points based on characters that have been destroyed getting to a certain point total thusly winning you the game. There's also an adventure mode whether it be single or multiplayer where you're going to have to fight against a certain number of enemy units and characters and you'll be using the enemy deck flipping over cards every round attempting to have them move in the best possible way to do as much damage to you as possible. You're going to have to complete certain requirements in order to win those variants of the different types of gameplay that you can do. Uh, another thing that's really cool about this game too, which I don't see in a lot of these tactics games, is the deck builder aspect. This has a deck of cards that you'll be drawing every round from, uh, up to your maximum hand size, and utilizing those cards to benefit you. Well, but even before the game, if you don't want to use the starter deck, you can actually go ahead and make your own deck. And with that comes drawing cards, utilizing those cards from your starter deck to then buy cards from various different locations. Additionally, there's events that are going to pop out that you're going to try and gain or lose benefits from. You'll also have to do a PvP event. They'll have certain requirements on them. You simply read the card and do what it says and enact that specific event. And then refreshing the shop every round, allowing you to purchase new items. There's different rarities, but that might not always matter. It might be based on what type of game mode you're playing. So for instance, if you're playing in the blitz mode, one of the more important factors is gathering these facilitator cards. These guys will allow you to move those meeples across your little dedicates keep and gain your rune lord some unique and powerful benefits throughout the game that can keep him alive. You want to do that very, very much so. However, if you're playing a different game mode, maybe you want to go and gather as many recruits as you can. The better ones are going to be more beneficial because your, your objective is to defeat your opponents, uh, various different troops around the board, as opposed to specifically targeting the Rune Lord. The artwork in this game is fantastic. It looks great. I don't know much about the Rune Lord's IP, but I can tell you in the artwork is that it's very, very solid. It works really well for this game, and it feels like you're playing those characters as you move around the board. They all have their own unique benefits and abilities, and they function specifically to that character. A lot of them will activate tokens on the board and you'll utilize those tokens by moving them around whether you activate all of them, whether you activate them all from a blank space, or whether one of your characters has an action ability after rolling a die that lets you activate them, moving and attacking with them. And they can be very beneficial. Now tokens, of course, uh, are simply going to, they're, they're like pawns in, in a game of chess. They'll, they'll die in one hit and they're not extremely powerful, but enough of them on the board can guarantee a quick defeat for your opponents. Uh, the 
quality of the game. This is a prototype copy, and I only have two specific players, but it plays up to four, and there are multiple other rune lords in the game that you can pick up. There is a ton of varying combinations, especially when it comes to deck building, that you can choose to play with as you increase the number of players or the different types of rune lords that you're going to be adding when either deck building or playing on the maps. There's various map boards in the game as well. I just showed you two of them, but there is a ton of different options to choose from, and with the setup, there is an everlasting amount of replayability with this tactical style game. If you like tactics games, if you like deck building games, this is what I would highly suggest checking out. It has a lot of varying possibilities to play with. It's very straightforward and simple as to how the gameplay works, how each player has their own unique pool for each of the characters that they're utilizing, and a specific objective that changes depending on the variation of the game mode. Solid components all around. I'm looking forward to see what types of uh, characters they're going to release, how they're going to release them, and you can check out all the quality aspects of the game at the Kickstarter in the link below. For me, an ex excellent, solid game. If you're interested in seeing us play it, we're actually going to play it on a live stream in the weeks to come. I'll post it up so you can go ahead and get a chance to schedule yourself to, to watch it, and I'll have it somewhere in the description where you can watch us play on Facebook Live and possibly even on Twitch. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Overall, The Rune Lords, a satisfying, solid, tactical game with a unique combination of deck building and, a uh, and cards that you're going to be utilizing throughout the game as you obliterate your opponent's Rune Lords, if, if you can. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification comment button there down below, as well as you can go ahead and check out the game. Link in the description currently on Kickstarter, The Rune Lords. You can back this little tactical style game. You can also check out Moonshell, a mermaid game, currently uh, coming out March 2nd. It'll be on Kickstarter as well. We'll have some links shortly, as well as live streaming it. And of course, live streaming this game every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You'll see us play games like this one and Moonshell there, and you can comment, win games, all kinds of great stuff. Join the Discord, join the Patreon, help us out. We really appreciate it. It helps us pay for our different mailing expenses, and we send little swags and goodies to people. All right, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to delving into the Rune Lords with you next time.